guys, it's Girl Got Game. Welcome back to Seduce Me. This time we're gonna do everyone's favorite bad boy, Sam. So I'm very excited to see him um, soften up towards Angel a little bit as time goes on. So, so I thought we'd start over again where he's like, mmm, as he kisses us, you know, because he's gotta make those mmm noises. <laughs> and then we'll skip ahead from there a little bit. So. Without further ado, who are you guys? No response. I'll call the police. Still nothing. None of them seem to be awake to answer or respond to me. It seems surreal to have random strangers in the house I just moved into, but I wanted answers quickly. That was until. Eve, get away from me! Woman, you're going to let me kiss you. I couldn't believe it myself, but within a mere blink of an eye, one of the men went from lying on the floor to being right in front of my face. What was even more odd was the fact that I felt... serene. And calm about it. Slowly, a desire burned from my chest, telling me to accept his kiss, even when my mind vehemently refused. Uh... huh. G go ahead. Good. Mmm. <laughs> mm. I hope more kisses with Sam, just leaves him going, mm. As he kissed me, I could feel my body go weak. I didn't know why, but that kiss was draining me of my energy, and yet... It was so good and made my heart sing. It was a strange and tingling feeling that danced over every nerve on my body. I could feel streams of intangible energy run up my body into my lips. It felt odd, but at the same time, it felt amazing. Sam, stop it. Hmm? The person kissing me, Sam was his name, glanced behind him. I said stop. Now. Mm. Fine. Finally, he pulled back, and I was left standing there in a daze. What? What? Huh? I couldn't tell what was going on. My mind was completely enwrapped by the kiss and my thoughts that melted into the depths of my forgotten memories. Please forgive my brother. He's a bit reckless. At least I feel a hell of a lot better than you right now. Because you used your abilities on her. Sam, you're such a reckless brute. Taking advantage of a beautiful young woman like her. Hi, Eric. It's weird seeing the three guys on um, on screen right now. It's like, first there was James, then there was Eric, now we're doing Sam. Shut that pretty boy mouth of yours before I rip it off your pretty boy face. Jeez, you guys. Can we not fight right now? Not all of us are in the best state. I guess you are right, Matthew. I agree. Hmm. However, as the men got up and started to chat freely, my thoughts began to reassemble, and I remembered my confusion and anger once again, only now multiplied tenfold. What? What? Huh? Did you say something beautiful? I exploded. What, what is going on? Why the hell are you all here in my house? Why are you all wounded? Why did you kiss me? Who are you guys? I couldn't help exploding, but after being taken advantage of and being left in a mush state, my words escaped without filter. I definitely scared the men around me, even the man who kissed me. Wait a second, the guy who kissed me? Ouch! What's your problem? What's your problem? You can't just go around forcing people to kiss you like that. Are you some kind of pervert? Pervert? It was only a kiss. It might mean nothing to you, but it means a lot to me. What? Was it your first kiss? <sighs> Ow! Hey, what was that for? I know first kisses aren't exactly amazing and full of sparkles and something out of a fairy tale. But I had at least expected it to be more than just something forced. So it was your first kiss. Stop making such a big deal out of it. Are you asking to get punched again? Well, what do you want me to do? It's not like I can somehow take it back. Well, you can apologize. You should at least apologize. That would suffice. As if to himself, he muttered something under his breath. Why do I always look like the bad guy? Apologies aren't my forte, but I'll try my best. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, fine. I'm sorry. 
Sorry about what? I'm sorry for kissing you like that. I went too far. I'm sorry for... He sighed and ran his fingers through his hair. I didn't mean for it to turn out that way. It's just... I act on impulse, okay? It's difficult to control myself and... Yeah. What am I saying? It's okay. I get what you're trying to say. Thank you for the apology. Yeah. No problem. And we got our first heartbeat. Anyway, if you try to pull any funny business in the future, just a fair warning. I know Taekwondo. <laughs> I think I've bickered enough. Time to get back to the main issue, which is Sam. So we're going to skip from here for a bit. All right, this time I'm going to jump up and protect myself because we haven't actually picked this option with Damien yet. I instantly jumped up and grabbed a pillow, covering myself with it. I felt stupid, yes, but who knew what this guy could do? Do your worst. This time I'm prepared. <sighs> Sorry, Damien, I didn't mean to cut off your sigh. He didn't move. I guess that he wasn't going to attack me. <laughs> Sorry. One thing still concerned me, though. But I have to keep moving on. <laughs> Um, you can have it, Matthew. What? I appreciate the thought, but, uh, no thanks. That's too bad. Are you sure? Uh, and no this time. It's fine. Maybe another time. Very well. Here's your seat, then. Let me get your chair for you, lovely lady. I don't know if I can bring myself to slap Eric after <laughs> last time. I can't. I'll skip ahead. I'll just... I'll be cool. I can't. I can't hit him anymore. I love him too much. You sure are quite the charmer. Yes, I am known for that. As much as I do appreciate the constant compliments, you don't have to keep talking to me like that. Like what? He batted his eyelids as if he had no idea what I was talking about, and I couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> Well, like you're trying to get into my pants half the time. I can assure you, I'm just a lover of beautiful women. Something tells me that there's more to it than that. For a moment, he looked away, losing a bit of his smile. Before I could question it, though, he turned back to me with a new teasing smile. Did you want there to be more? I didn't want to hit him, but I didn't know how to react, so I couldn't look at him. He really chuckled again in my ear. <laughs> Sorry. You just look so cute when you're blushing. I felt my face heat up simply from his words. I then felt Eric take my hand and kiss it gently. I hope you'll enjoy dinner, however, my dear. I drew my attention back to the dishes. I was both intrigued and slightly scared by the amount of food they made. Seeing my expression, Eric leaned forward and proudly smiled, gesturing to all of the dishes with a dramatic sweep of his arm. I made almost all of the dishes myself. Humorously enough, Matthew looked at him with a shocked expression, as if he was betrayed. His face changed instantly to that of a frown. And I'm the queen of the Nile! What's that supposed to mean? Me, you, and James did the work together, dummy. It's you, James, and I, Matthew. Wow, that burn, though, gets me every time. <laughs> Little boys will always make mistakes. Matthew looked at James in disbelief, probably for siding with Eric, and he annoyedly swiveled back to Eric to confront him. I'm not a little boy. I'm barely a year younger than you. Well, you certainly don't act like it. <laughs> I really couldn't help but laugh. Matthew seemed very much like a kid. He was adorable. However, I couldn't help but feel like, in a way, he was much more mature than the others, especially Eric. Huh? Is something funny? <laughs> no, no, it's nothing at all. Thank you for the meal, all of you. Oh, <laughs> you're welcome, miss. Such a well-mannered young lady. Beautiful inside and out. Eric, knock it off! There he is. In agreement with Matthew, Sam cocked up his head and glared at Eric. Seriously, you're getting really annoying with that suck-up act. It was obvious that Sam was the bad boy of the group. He had this big, tough act, and it was obvious he was physically stronger than the rest of the guys, but was there more to him than that? We shall find out. I'm just trying to be a gentleman. 
The young girl has already gone through so much. She deserves a good treatment. There's a difference between being a gentleman and being an obnoxious flirt. <laughs> Schooled even by James. You're gonna need some cold water for that burn. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I don't believe we caught your name, even though you know each of us. Ah, I'm Angel. It's a pleasure to finally know your name. Yeah, that's a nice name. They were all comfortable around me, despite the awkward situation we were in. It was as if it were natural for them to be around humans. I guess that was just how Incubi worked. But I was still curious about one thing. Excuse me. All at once, they looked at me. I didn't know why, but having all of them look at me made me feel... kind of important. Like a queen or something. What is it, miss? I wanted to thank you for the food, but I still want to know why you all came here. I feel like I don't quite understand. Understand? Yeah, like being told that a bunch of incubi randomly appearing in your house was perfectly understandable. Oh, um... How do we explain? We were attacked. We came here to heal. What's so difficult to understand? Now you're just being rude, Sam. I'm just saying, how is that difficult to understand? No, I mean, what specifically happened? Well, you see, we've been traveling around for quite some time now. Just recently, we came into town, but we were jumped by this band of misfits. So, in order to escape and heal, we came here for shelter. Again, we apologize for the mess we made. It's fine, I guess. So, you're all better now, right? Yup, all thanks to you. Huh? Me? You see, beautiful, we feed on sexual energy. But we don't just get it from kissing lovely ladies such as yourself. We can simply touch someone's hand to obtain sexual energy. Everyone carries sexual energy, you know. I was still in shock about their powers. It wasn't just kisses that gave them power, it was anything physical. No wonder I was out for a while. These incubi intrigued me, but at the same time I could almost hear a warning siren going off in my head. Is there anything else you wish to know? Well, what do you all plan to do now? Yeah, what are we gonna do now, James? That is a very good question. We just got here and surely we'll be hunted again if we leave. We can take him, easily. Not without more training, Sam. The result of that was clearly evident in our last encounter with them. At that moment, I didn't know what came over me, but I suddenly felt sorry for them. They couldn't possibly survive out there. If they didn't know it was illegal to break into people's homes, they probably didn't know a bunch of other stuff. They probably would cause chaos all over town. Or, on the flip side, they could be taken in for questioning and be poked and prodded like lab frogs for research. That was even worse. But most of all, they reminded me of... back then. Okay, we'll skip this memory. Okay, let's just go back a little bit. So I want to get them help. Clenching my hands into fists, I strengthened my resolve to speak up. Well, um, you could... What was that, lovely lady? That is, uh... Spit it out already. You could stay with me here, if you'd like. As soon as I finished my sentence, the room became still. I'm not sure what went through their heads from my words. The silence in the air cut like a knife until I finally spoke up once more. It seemed like you all needed a place to stay, and, well, I just moved into this giant house, so it seemed like it made sense. It was still quiet in the room. I decided to keep talking. If you would like to stay here, though, there are two things that I need all of you to follow. Yes? First of all, you can't use your powers or deliberately do something that might harm me or any guest that comes over. Well, say for enemies, but you get the drift. That sounds reasonable. Second, you have to help me with any errands around the house. This place is kind of big, so... yeah. That is a generous offer, miss. Are you sure that would be okay? We don't wish to burden you any more than we already have. It's alright, really. I mean, I just started living here myself, so I would appreciate some help around the house. A wonderful idea. We'll live here and train while helping you with the house. Servants for the lovely princess. 
What? Are you serious? Shh, be quiet, Sam. <laughs> I haven't slept in a bed for days. <laughs> they all seem to like the idea, except for Sam. And hey, I didn't really hate the idea either, even if they were incubi. It would be interesting having five guys help me with taking care of the house, given they would follow the rules that I had just laid down. Grr, fine! But we're not staying here forever. Only until we can beat up that group of punks. Mm. I think that is a reasonable time limit for our stay. I can't wait for Sam to sing a different tune by the time that takes place. Yes! This is awesome! Also beautiful, if you need a bedfellow. Um... Eric, knock it off. I was happy that they agreed. Ahem. Maybe it was because I wasn't going to be lonely for a while. Maybe it was because they all needed help and my want to help people was fulfilled. I would never be sure. So what are we waiting for? Let's celebrate and dig in! Finally, I'm starving. Instantly, Matthew and Sam began to stuff themselves with the food on the table. I noticed James's eye twitch in irritation, so I stifled my incoming laugh. Really, you two? You're both acting like pigs. Oh, let them have a little freedom, James. It's not like we've eaten recently, either. I'm sure they've been starving. Still, that's no excuse for stuffing their faces like backyard swine. I almost couldn't hold it in. So I didn't. What is that one with, like, all the, the stuff? I want to know. Anyway. <laughs> I couldn't hold in my laughter anymore. As I laughed, Matthew and Sam looked my way, faces stuffed. Is something funny? What are you laughing at? <sighs> I stopped to catch my breath. I leaned over the table and took a few breaths before replying. You both are so funny! Both of their faces turned a slight pink before they looked away from me and they swallowed the food in their mouths. Sh shut up! We're not funny! We're hungry! Well, we're, we're glad that we made you laugh. Nice. Shut up, Matthew! What? I'm just saying. <laughs> See, James, it's entertainment for her. <laughs> Ugh, I can't believe we used to be together. They were funny to me. At least they enjoyed the food. As I watched, I took a couple pieces of food for myself and placed them on my plate before eating as well. Eventually, we all ate dinner together. It was strange eating with just guys, but they were enjoyable to be around. They made me feel like a part of their family as we ate together. However, our peace was soon disturbed. Huh? It's my mom. Excuse me. Hello? Hey, honey, how are you? I'm sorry I didn't get to see you off. Hi, Mom. Everything's fine. I'm actually eating dinner right now. Oh, good, good. So there was food there. Well, your father wanted me to call and talk to you about having a house party tomorrow night to celebrate the new house and all. A house party? Tomorrow night? So soon? Your father insists. You know how he is with events. I knew exactly what she meant. He didn't like long, relaxing periods between important events. It was slightly messed up. I was expected to act on the drop of a dime, from moving immediately the day after a funeral to my grandfather's house to now organizing a party. I know. Well, since I don't exactly have you two here to help me arrange it, I'm going to need some time to prepare things. Oh, that's fine. I mean, Suzu and Naomi can help. I have work, and you know how your father is. I know. I have to do it myself. He won't help. I'm sure it'll be amazing, honey. I have faith in you. Thanks, Mom. Alright, I gotta go. I love you, sweetie. I love you too, Mom. Great. Now how am I going to do this? Is something wrong? She has to organize a house party for her parents. Huh? How did you- Oh. Right. Mind reading. <laughs> But yeah, I gotta do it soon or my parents will be really disappointed. I'll have to stay up and organize everything tonight. Hey, why don't we help you? That's what we're here for, right? I don't see why not. I can name a few reasons why we shouldn't. Sam? Back off! Uh, we 
We'll take care of everything, miss. Just leave everything to us. That was surprising. I didn't think the boys would offer help right off the bat. I couldn't help but smile. I was actually rather thankful now that I let them stay. Now I didn't have to do everything alone. As I kept thinking about it, I couldn't help but yawn. <sighs> Feeling a little tired over there, princess? Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long day. At least tomorrow's the weekend so I can sleep in. Then it hit me. Wait, where are you all going to sleep? We found some guest rooms on the opposite end of the house from the master bedroom. I'm sure those will do just fine. Oh, got it. All right then, I'm heading to my room to study and sleep. I guess I'll see you all tomorrow? Have a good night. I will. You too. With that, I left the dining room and went to my room. Eric, no. What? I wasn't going to do anything. Yes, he was. <laughs> what were you planning? I'm so curious. As soon as I got into my room, a wave of exhaustion hit me. Why am I so tired all of a sudden? I just woke up from that nap. I dragged myself to my bed and hauled up one of my bags. I opened it and grabbed my economics book, knowing that no matter how tired I was, I had to study at least a page or two before sleeping at last. The words on the page scrambled in my mind as I read through them, but after two or three tries, I managed to understand what the page was about. Equations. Ugh. Finally, I decided to change into my pajamas and head to bed. Today had been a long day, and I needed the rest. Hopefully tomorrow will be better. Three days of surprises in a row would kill me. With that thought in my mind, I drifted to sleep, embracing the darkness of slumber. <laughs> you fucking pretty boys think you're all that, huh? Well, save that to the end of my pistol! Huh? What's going on? I couldn't move my body. I felt like I was tied up and I couldn't see anything beyond the darkness that surrounded me. Yet I could hear the sounds of a heated argument coming at me from all directions. <laughs> One move and she gets it! Let her go! Matthew? Come on, chicken shit. Fight us like a real man! <laughs> like you scare me, Sam! Come on! Why can't I see? Stay away from her, Malix! And what are you gonna do, nerd boy? Suddenly I felt myself pulled to one side and arms wrapped around my body protectively. I've got you. Don't worry. H huh Eric? As I was held in a tight embrace, I felt the world around me once again settle into a low, peaceful hum. The hostility of the dream before had faded into black as the arms around me rocked me comfortingly. Slowly, though, my eyes fluttered open and I looked up at the person holding me. D damien I stared into the eyes of Damien. His face was painted with worry and concern, and I knew he must have seen my dream. Why did I dream of Eric holding me, though? You can't control your dreams. Oh, well, I guess you're right. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. What time is it? It's 9 a.m. James and I were making breakfast when I, uh, well... You can't control your mind reading? No. Not yet, at least. I hope to learn eventually, though. Is everything all right? Huh? Yeah, I'm all right. That's good. I'm assuming you had a nightmare. Yes. I'm sorry for disturbing you both. You didn't disturb us, miss. Besides, we'd rather make sure you're okay before anything. Uh, oh, thank you. Now, why don't you come downstairs with us and have some breakfast? I'm sure some nice food will take your mind off of what you dreamt of. It was embarrassing to be the damsel in distress once again, but I felt rather happy that James and Damien were concerned for me, despite only knowing me for a short time. I wasn't sure if it was just courtesy or if they were genuinely concerned. I couldn't exactly read their minds. All right. The two boys led me back to the dining room where the smell of bacon and eggs danced in the air. The smell wafted from the kitchen and made its way into the room, making my stomach growl in need. Breakfast smells good. We should be done with breakfast soon. If you want to sit down at the table, you can. I nodded before sitting down. As I sat down, however, my mind drifted back to the dream I had. 
That feeling of hostility around me made my body shudder instinctively, even though I knew it wasn't real. However, as my eyes closed, I felt a hand place itself on top of my head, breaking me out of my thoughts. Huh? Morning. You alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Sam, the owner of the hand on my head, raised an eyebrow at me before rustling my hair and moving away to sit down at the table. Aw. He then barked towards the kitchen where James was working. Hey! Is the food done yet? I'm starving! There's no need to yell, Sam! You're yelling too! Don't argue with me! From behind me, Eric appeared and sat beside me, rubbing his temples in obvious annoyance. Can we not yell this early in the morning? It's not like we're in the castle. Castle? For some reason, when I heard the word castle, I couldn't help but yell in surprise. These guys had a castle? Sam looked at me and smirked at my reaction. Yeah, we have a castle back home. Our dining room's ten times bigger than this room. Then wouldn't it be logical to not yell? <laughs> Whatever. Soon, James and Damien appeared, hands full of plates that carried bacon, eggs, toast, and waffles. They placed the plates down by each seat before seating themselves. Mmm, my favorite. Finally. Thank you for the breakfast. It looks amazing. It's our pleasure. All of a sudden, my phone began to ring again, ushering me to pull it from my pocket and answer. Hello? Hey, good morning! Guess who's at your door right now? <sighs> well, I'm going to pick some different options this time. Right on cue, there was a knock from the lobby door. My heart stopped. Suzu and Naomi were here. I'll get it! My heart quickly began to pound in my chest. Matthew was in the lobby and he'd get to the door first. I instantly jumped out of my chair and rushed out of the dining room. As I passed through, archway between the, through the archway between the dining room and lobby... I saw Matthew reach his hand for the brass door handle, causing the world to go into slow motion. Matthew, don't! But before my words could reach his ears, Matthew had opened the door and revealed the surprised faces of Naomi and Suzu. Uh, uh... The world around me stopped as Suzu and Naomi kept their eyes on Matthew, who merely stared back in fear and embarrassment. I could feel the air go from warm to freezing in a matter of seconds. Uh, hi? I could not believe this was happening. How was I going to explain this? This week was already bad enough. To make matters worse, I was frozen in place. Please, for God's sake, someone do something other than stand there. Who are you? S Suzu, let me explain. What's going on here? Who's at the door, Matthew? Oh. Oh. Soon the other incubi appeared in the lobby with us. This situation was not getting pretty. I had to think fast. They're in your head! <laughs> Susan reached out and poked Matthew on the forehead, making him stare cross-eyed at her finger. Uh, hello to you too? Seems real to me. Darn. They're not imaginary. Um... It was no use. There was no time to lie to them. I felt helpless. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder and felt the tension in my body almost fade away. I turned my head to see James smile at me before stepping in front of me. We must apologize, ladies. We know this situation must be confusing for everyone. Let's take this to the dining room and we'll explain everything. I stared at James wide-eyed. Was he going to tell them who they were? Everything seemed surreal. Before I knew it, I was led to the dining room along with Suzu and Naomi and sat across from their confused gazes. As Naomi and Suzu sat down, Eric and Matthew placed their untouched plates of food in front of them, surprising their guests. Whoa, this looks amazing! Thank you! Our pleasure, ladies. We hope you enjoy your meals. Make sure you dig in! I looked at Naomi and Suzu as they began to eat, visibly enjoying every bite they placed in their mouth. Hopefully the food would ease their minds for whatever James wanted to reveal. As Naomi and Suzu ate their impromptu meals, James and the other boys stood behind my chair, making me grow more red in the face. So, Anderson, are you gonna tell us what's going on? 
Well, you see, uh... Gently, James placed a hand on my shoulder again, signaling me to just eat my food. As I began to eat, he spoke to Naomi and Suzu. We are Miss Anderson's house servants. We were hired by her late grandfather to help around the mansion, but since he has passed, we now assist Miss Anderson with living on her own. That makes sense. It's such a huge house. A huge house for a wonderful princess such as Miss Anderson deserves the greatest of servants to care for it. But why are you all dressed so casually and stuff? Aren't servants supposed to have uniforms or whatever? Well, Miss Anderson allows us to get comfy while we work. So she lets us wear casual clothes. Yeah, something like that. We're sorry if we made this situation awkward earlier. We're very sure that Miss Anderson is also still getting used to having us as her servants. It would be very hard to explain after just a day. I guess. So, if I may ask, what brings you two ladies here? Well, we wanted to see how our friend was doing. Since it's the weekend and all, usually we hang out and just chill. Yeah, like going to the arcade and stuff. Or the Pink Lady Cafe. There's an arcade? <clears throat> that <clears throat> makes a lot of sense, ladies. Well, we don't wish to disturb you any further than we have, so we'll take our leave and start preparing the house. Huh? Preparing for what? We gotta prep the house for some sort of housewarming party thing. Our princess's parents requested a housewarming party to be held here soon. And by soon, they mean tonight. Oh, well, I guess we can help out or something. Right, Naomi? I thought you wanted to go to the arcade. This housewarming thing is more important. No need. We can handle it. If you'd like to, miss, you can go out with your friends while we handle things here. Seriously? Sam, not now. Huh. Well, I... I wanted to help out, but at the same time, I wanted to go out with my friends. James gave me a look of understanding, letting me know that if I left, everything would be okay. I had to make a decision. I'll stay and help around the house. Are you sure? I'm sure. Besides, it is my housewarming party. I should help out too. Want us to help out as well? I think we got it all taken care of. Thanks, though, girls. All right. We'll head on out then, so we're not in the way. Sorry, guys. I'll hang out with you guys soon. It's all good, Anderson. We'll definitely come to the housewarming party tonight. Thank you. I led them back into the lobby and walked them to the doors, opening it for them with a thankful smile. They both gave me hugs before walking out to Naomi's car, which was parked in the driveway. And with that, they left. I was happy that they wanted to help, but I had to do this on my own. It was not their work, so I didn't want to force it on them just because they were my best friends. 